Welcome to New Mexico Black Rifle Operators Union. I'm your ho- <clears throat> your host, Sean. So tonight's uh, podcast, or for tomorrow morning, I wanted to talk about good and bad stuff that's going on in the 2A. Um, the good news. Let's start with the good for once, because this is always doom and gloom when we talk politics and guns, because in my opinion, and I've said this multiple times, they don't belong together. Um... The good news is that there is rumors, and I'm getting my source from Washington Gun Law, who has people that are trying to, uh, he's fighting a case in California, or he has friends that are fighting a a case in California, and it has to do with an assault weapons ban. And they are expecting that they are going to lose their, uh, to win their case, and the other people, the state, the state of California is about to lose it which would overturn their gun ban, uh, their assault weapons ban. Quote, assault weapons ban. Um, modern rifle ban. It's, a, it's unconstitutional, we all know it, but the left is going to keep going after it. Uh, I've spoke about this yesterday, but I'll speak about it again. Um, Marge Torre, if you don't know who he is, he's kind of a libertarian guy. He's running with... Uh, Dave Smith, I think, for in the Mises Caucus to be um, the Libertarian candidates for president and vice president. So I think Marge, uh, Maj Torre is, uh, I'm sorry, Maj, if I'm screwing up your name. He's the founder of Black Guns Matter. Um, he's very much into freedom. He's also one of the people that signed on for um, the the bump stock ban, I think it was, or something else. One of the bigger ones. No, the Bruin decision. Uh, the bit, One of the big ones that would actually help us overturn all these unjust laws. Um, so what he spoke about on his little two-minute blurb today was he was talking about the marijuana win. Um, again, I know some of us don't care about cannabis, and these two industries can't contact each other right now. Um, but when this, and if and this ever goes nationwide, the legalization of cannabis, which I think it will, just judging by what I've seen doing research, they're now at 31 or 32 um, states that are legalizing it. So there is going to be more cases like this one I'm about to speak about. In Oklahoma, there was a big win for a person that was basically caught going into the dispensary and had a firearm on him. So that made him a prohibited person. He won this case. Now, why is this a big deal? The cannabis industry deals a lot in cash, and they're also bumping up a lot into um, the cartel guys. And the best way to fight this, in my opinion, is always self-ownership, let you be able to, to carry your own firearm and defend yourself. But they won this case in Oklahoma, and while this is only good in Oklahoma, there's some cascading effects to this that... They're finding more and more with court cases that they're siding with the 2A. Now the left is calling those judges that are siding with the 2A extremist judges. Uh, case in point, uh, Judge uh, President Biden right now. President Biden last night, let's get to the bad. Uh, if you didn't watch the State of the Union, that's okay. There's people like me that watch it because, well, we are politicos. And I wanted to watch Tim Cass's uh, Last time they had Lauren Southern on, and she's a blast when she's just going on a tear. Um, very based, very cool lady. Um, she Also on the good news with that, Tim Pool has sponsored a um, documentary. So Tim Cast is going to be releasing a documentary about the 2A and about Assault Weapons Ban, and Lauren Southern did this. Now, if I can figure out where the distribution pa- uh, pathway is for it, I definitely I'll get it, but I think I'll get it anyway because it'll probably be behind Tim Cast's uh, paywall. I'm a member of Tim Cast. I like Tim. I like him because he's mostly just a straight shooter. In today's society, you can't find that very often. I don't care about the culture war um, drama people that are kind of giving Tim a lot of crap right now. But that win sets precedence in our favor in the 2A community's favor. Because if cannabis does go legalized because of the number of states that have nationwide, that is, 
because the number of states that have those laws that allow recreational marijuana, New Mexico is one of them, that means that the concealed carry stuff that's going on, the number of states that allow that constitutional carry or concealed carry it is right at the majority now of states allow this because it's constitutional. They have to. New Jersey's the only one trying to buck the system. Um, New Jersey's still trying to fight the Bruin decision itself to get their gun, uh, their concealed carry law that they say is 59 years. Um, well, it is 59 years old. Overturn. And the only pushback that they see from, uh, well, that I've seen is from Colleen Noir. But Colleen Noir was telling him straight up, dude, you just admitted you want to and he does on camera. The uh, one of the guys on the committees that is trying to do this in New Jersey, straight out said, "We're trying to. We know this has no effect on crime, but this has every bit of an effect on the law-abiding citizen." Now, why is that a win? Because the more times their mask slips, and the more times we actually get to see it, and you know, sunlight's the best disinfectant for this type of stuff. It makes people perk up and go, "Oh crap." They're saying the quiet parts out loud, and independents like me, um, uh, believe me, I was a conservative uh, conformist or statist a long time ago. I'm not anymore after COVID. But um, with that, if it's the plurality of the states for one law or another, um, it kind of sets a precedence that the Supreme Court has to go f- with. Let's get to New Mexico stuff, because there's some good and bad that happen. One of the bills specifically was tabled, and um, let me read through this stuff for you from New Mexico Shooting Sports Association. Um, I mention them all the time. I didn't get to go to this committee meeting today, but there's another one on Friday um, in room 309 at 103 p.m. and on the 10th. Um, if you check with New Mexico Shooting Sports Astor, uh, Association, they actually put the Zoom link in there so you can use it and actually start seeing the pre-drafted letters of the committee opposing the bill. Um, what how, what this committee meeting is specifically after is House Bill 72 in New Mexico, which is a ban on bump stocks, binary triggers, so on and so forth. This is one of those ones that Trump pushed the ATF to go ahead and do. This is why we're in the pickle with the pistol ban stuff, or the brace ban that's going on pistols. Um, This is the state trying to push the mandate from the Democratic Party, to be blunt, um, to try to get something done. Since it's already in precedent in case law, uh, and multiple cases nationally, that they overturn these, because they're unconstitutional, because all gun laws are gu- unconstitutional in my opinion. But specifically, what they're, what this would do is it would give these guys pause. This is something that New Mexico should already be going, holy crap. But why this one was put in committee um, was because there's a call for scary guns and fully automatic guns. Remember, full semi-automatic these people still think that a uh, regular AR-15 or a regular Kalashnikov available in the United States are fully automatic. Um, and we'll get to House Bill 101 here in a little bit. But House Bill 72, the ban on the bump stocks, binary triggers, or they call them semi-automatic to f- uh, converters f- to for fully automatic. Um, they're trying to make it into a scary fully automatic or machine gun term when it's not. Um It's incredibly vague vague is what they're saying from New Mexico Shooting Sports. So again, these aren't my words. Which means that the vaguer they make something, the harder it is to enforce. There's a rule of... um, Iraq Veteran said this stuff. It's it's the leniency rule. That if there's any ambiguity about the law, they have to side on the... or err on the side of leniency. So that's a good win for us because it means 20 years in prison isn't going to be a likely outcome, but it's still a bad one. Um, so the other thing they're talking about on Saturday, the 11th, 
House Consumer and Public Affairs Committee will be hearing House Bill 224 and House Bill 238. Both create a crime of discharging a firearm in densely populated areas. Now, on the surface, that sounds like a great idea, but there's no provisions in this if, you, if this was an act of self-defense. Um, they are having the meeting in Room 309 again at 9 a.m. on Saturday to oppose this. Um, the committee itself has a uh, substitute for House Bill 101 has been made available to the public uh, public today. The new out bills the law outlaws the sale of semi-automatic rifles and some semi-automatic pistols. Current owners would be allowed to keep their firearms if they register them within, within the state. This bill also bans 50 caliber uh, rifles. Now, I have a question about that one because there's such a thing as a 50 caliber muzzle loader. And as uneducated as our lawmakers are in Santa Fe, they're stupid enough to ban something that you don't even have to get a background check to get shipped to your door. Um, and I could see them conflating the two, conflating the two, and having state PD roll in and enforce this. I know a couple of people have 50 cals. That's one of the reasons why I got to shoot one. I don't own one myself. But the semi-automatic ban and all the other stuff where they're wanting you to register them with the state, um, let's see how well that's complied with. Because I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm not going to even tell you what I'm going to do. But I can tell you that there's going to be a very low compliance level on this law if it's passed in the state of New Mexico. Um, with the thing I said earlier about California, with their gun ban or assault weapons ban potentially being overturned, this is another waste of money, just like House Bill 72 um, and House Bill 101 would be the same type of thing. If there's already case law saying you can't do this, there will be a Supreme Court hearing in our district courts that will have to look at this from that lens, that there's case law that says you can't do this. So yet again, New Mexico's wasting lots of money that they probably don't have, that they're probably using from COVID money or from some super PAC that volunteered. Um, why I drew the contacts up here for the House Committees on Public Affairs is to contact them. I have composed an email myself that I will send out a little bit after this podcast uh, when I load this up to be dropped tomorrow. Um, the House Consumer and Public Affairs Committee are the ones you want to email first. That's Joanne Ferrere, Ferrere, Angelico Rubio, John Block, Stephanie Lord, Andrea Romero, and Liz Thompson. Uh, the House Judiciary members, these are the secondary committees that we always have to fight to, is Christine Chandler, Andrea Romeo, Bill R. Rem, and Elizio Lee Alcon, Gail Chasey, Ryan Lane. Oh, that is epic. Ryan Lane is from northwest New Mexico. He's an Aztec tried and true American hero. And I think that he's going to be one of those guys that goes, no, we're not interested in this. We have other things to do. But this just happened to be one of this committee's on. So that's awesome for New Mexico because I'm pretty sure Ryan's going to side with us. Javier Martinez, Matthew McQueen, Greg Nibbert, Andrea Reeb, and Rena uh, Spansky. Um, I'm not too great with Polish names or Ukrainian names. As you can tell, sometimes I even have a hard time speaking clearly like I don't have a mouthful of marbles. Um, but these are the guys we want to contact and say no. Um, House Bill 9, House Bill 50, House Bill 72, House Bill 100, House Bill 101. What do I think is going to happen? Someone's going to turn coat. Um, it usually happens that way. They'll make some sort of backroom deal to try to appease someone else to get a deal for something on finance that will help their current district. Um, so while I have great high hopes for Ryan, it is very possible that Ryan has to cave because he has a higher priority for what he does for the community, and he is very community-focused. So I don't think he'll cave, but there's a possibility. And I don't mean to just expand on how great Ryan is. You, if you're in northwest New Mexico and you've seen the guy... Dude has done charities where he's ran uh, 
marathons basically to get cash for charities, outright charities, in some of the harsh conditions in northwest New Mexico and other places. So I'm a fan of Ryan. Um, I would have voted for him, but I don't live in his um, district. So if I was, like I said, if I was going to be a betting man, the 21 and over uh, purchase of firearms, I think that'll pass. I think they will find a way to make that pass because, well, they're stupid. Um, I also think that they will pass um, the safe storage of firearms. And that's where they're going to go. These other ones, I think they're going to try like hell. And they're going to really have to go to a floor vote before we can actually make a difference and see something. Well, and I don't know that we'll make a difference. In the committees, if you make it noisy enough and drag out long enough, that's what causes them pause and causes them to stop doing anything. At the national level, with Biden calling for an all-out assault weapons ban. Um, again, he can roll it in a cone. I ain't complying to anything, especially at the federal level. And what's more hilarious about that is if you think about national compliance in like New Jersey or, or New York, they have magazine capacity bans. I have heard through the grapevine from other gun tubers uh, and other people in the space, because I use them as sources a lot, because I'm still not broken into the uh, 2A community as much as I'd like to. Um, they are saying that... <laughs> oh, I lost my thought there for a second. Uh, oh, we'll come back to that. <laughs> See, I'm getting too old. And I swear after COVID, I've lost some a, uh, a kink in my the way I think. Stephanie Lord, I also think on the House Consumer and Public Affairs Committee is also, I think, one of the strongest 2A advocates we've had. If I remember Stephanie, she was the one that was driving a lot of the protests a little bit ago, and she was elected the, oh yeah, the ban. Compliance. New York, New Jersey. How many magazines were turned in? How many bump stocks were turned in? Um, one of the gun tumors in the blogosphere had, been, had said that there was 430 bump stocks that were actually turned in nationwide. Um, that's foolish to me. I don't think you should turn in a piece of plastic, especially since you bought it and the ATF said it was legal. It was only until the orange man said it was bad. And that was after a mass, quote-unquote, mass shooting in uh, Las Vegas. Remember that one. It died really quickly because they never found a motive. Um, there's a lot of suspicious questions around it. Like, a lot of people have said there are multiple shooters. Um, I'd had to have been on the ground to see that. Judging by what I've seen personally, video-wise, and I've seen it from multiple angles, there was just one shooter, and he was just in a very good position to hit these people. Um, that said, he's a loser, he's an idiot, he should never have done this, but there's some mental issues from that man way beforehand. And that's pretty indicative of, uh, well all shooters uh, not go good shooters I mean shooters that go out and do stupid shit in the public eye um, when you take on a totally innocent target um, you're no longer and you never were an actual American citizen you have lost your damn mind a long time ago um, if I have to use one of my guns in defense of myself my person my, my property uh, my freedoms it is a gateway of last resort. I want to use all three boxes before we have to break that fourth one on because it's going to suck. And I say that based on what we've seen in the forever wars in the Middle East um, and the one that we're, they're trying really hard to get us into in Ukraine right now. So there is some hope. We have some work to do. Um, I really, really do believe, and I honestly want to say, I, I think Bill Rame is up here in northwest New Mexico, too, at William Rame. I'd have to double-check that. I should know my congressmen and reps a lot better. I know uh, Rod Martinez. Uh, I think his name's Martinez. And that's how I don't know his last name. I, I recognized him, and I, I actually got to interact with him a couple different times. I think he would be one of those guys that would say no. That's probably why he's also not on this committee. 
but he may be on one of the other finance committees that can cut the teeth out of him. And that's something else we need to think about is instead of just talking to these guys, advocate for how expensive this is and how frivolous this is. Think about our tactic here in New Mexico, where we have. We know our government's always looking to rob Peter to pay Paul for schools and roads. That's the only thing our state government's supposed to pay for, uh, infrastructure type things. Wasting money to have to fight this in court, it's time it needs to happen, and I hope it's a brutal, bloody lesson that Grisham and the Roundhouse learn. Because it will cost them millions if this gets taken to court. Or when this gets taken to court, if it passes. Um, I know several people in New Mexico that are already trying to talk to lawyers. Um, I know GOA has already been in the area. I know that the FPC's in the area. Uh, New Mexico Shooting Sports Association, they are always there, and if it weren't for them being able to do this, I wouldn't be able to report on this a little bit. Um, I have another friend that was at the meeting today, and he basically said the same thing, that it looks like there's a lot of unrest in the committees, and it always falls on party lines, which typical in today's pol political landscape but that gives me hope, too, because the longer this stalls, the more that time this takes, the longer or the more likely it's going to be tabled. The same thing goes with the national debate. They have tons of stuff to do with the economy, uh, the forever wars that we've been in, and backing Ukraine right now that are of more pressing issues. And the longer it takes for them to hear and talk those things and debate them, the less likely action is taken on them. And that is a good thing. Uh, despite what lots of people say, there, our government's not meant to react as fast as it has been. Um, there's too much political power in one side. And it's usually the neocons is what I'm going to say, the people that have been in power forever. It's one of the reasons why I don't like Grisham. She used to be a senator or a rep for New Mexico a long time ago. Um, and then she magically ended up as our governor. And then during COVID, she was trying to become the health person for Biden. Um, that didn't work out. Dr. Scrace is retired. If you look at the people that have left New Mexico, uh, cabinet positions specifically, left after working for Grisham, that's all you need to know about how well she leads. And if you are a leader of any corporation or any business, you know that HR things where you're ha losing people, um, that capital, that institutional knowledge, when you lose a lot of those, it tends to hamstring and show how poor you are of a leader you are. Um, it's a very good reflection of knowing that if you're taking people that have always been in a position like a bureaucratic position specifically since they're a cabinet type person they were appointed and you were once a political darling to get one of those and then you're in it for a few months or a year or two and then you leave um, that reflects on bad leadership because that means that these people in the highest office usually don't have a battle plan and their battle plan usually doesn't have any logistical support behind it before they try to implement it. In New Mexico, that would make perfect sense to me, especially working for K-12 for 12 years and five years or seven years, something like that, for some college beforehand. Um, I can tell you, for higher ed is what I mean, what I can tell you, watching what they do, there is tons of waste um, because there's usually mandates without funding or there's above line uh, I think that's what it is above line funding that is allocated for something really stupid that the state wants to try to implement um, and I say that because usually the state's trying to throw spaghetti at the wall and have something stick um, that that's the one misfortune of New Mexico other than having really small towns where everybody knows each other that's good and bad because you usually get it involved in someone else's drama when you don't want to be. Um, but at the national level, I see a lot more hope. Um, because, again, 
if you can't make these laws stick in something like California or New Jersey or New York or Texas, these are larger populous states, and if you cannot make it stick there and the, go the law is on our side, for once it's really on our side um, because there was enough spine put into the legal system to make them actually start hearing some of these cases. And I ultimately, I have great hope in that a lot of these are going to just fail. Um, I only worry about backroom deals. If I vote yes on this, you need to vote yes on this. Or if I vote yes on this or no on this, you're going to help fund this project, pet project, in this one corner of the state or this one part of the thing that only services a few people. Locally that happens, but at the national level that happens all the time. So that there's good and bad going on. Let's focus on the good. We've got case law that probably will start setting precedents if and when California loses their battle that they're putting out right now. And Newsom's the one that actually said that it's probably going to be um, kicked back down from the court saying no. Um, that's a big endorsement of them saying, oh, crap, we lost. Um, that's great. Uh, New York, or not New York, New Jersey being held to, to task. Uh, their committee members or their representatives being caught on camera saying, yeah, this isn't going to do anything for crime, but it's going to uh, oppress or hurt uh, the regular working people that just want to exercise their rights. The two A's for everyone. Um, that I, I can't be that much more of an advocate for it. Um, you see people that were pissed off about the, what is it, the shooting in Orlando that was at a gay nightclub. What would happen if that guy had been armed, if one of those people in that place had been armed, that one sober person? But they can't carry, even if they're sober, because it serves alcohol. Now, I understand you don't want people being drunk and doing stupid stuff, um, high or drunk. Let's talk about that that way this day, this day and age. Um, but one, how many times do you go to a club, myself included, where you didn't have a designated driver? Um, what about a designated shooter or a designated protector? Um, I could definitely see that taken off with some of us good old country boys in the in the backwoods going, yeah, I don't feel like going out there unless I have some sort of strap. And the other dude pipes up and says, yeah, we got you covered. Um, I don't want to drink anyway, so let's just roll that way. I want to make sure we get home safe. That, to me, is a bigger problem in New Mexico than the gun stuff. Um, drunk driving... Um, high driving. I don't even think they have a test for the the high drivers in New Mexico. They're going to have to take you get a blood test, um, which I think is hilarious. Again, Freeman, don't ask permission. You do you. Just do it responsibly and be an adult about everything you do. And I honestly think that's where the cops get twisted and basically public ed gets twisted is they end up doing other jobs uh, that they really have no business doing. A teacher isn't a cop, a teacher isn't a chef, a teacher isn't um, a mom, maybe a mom, but isn't the mom of the kid in the classroom. And too many times we have them, and the, or the janitor, that are all having to do these roles, which is part of the job, and they do it willingly to an extent. But can you imagine having that last bit of responsibility to say, hey, uh, you're going to have to defend your class. Now, there's some... Like me, when I was in K-12, I would have willingly taken that responsibility. But to be blunt, I wasn't out in the classrooms enough to make that really stick. I always thought that the guys that they should trust were probably the former SOs, sheriff's officers, or deputies that ended up working for us in support positions like maintenance. They're all over the place all the damn time. There are plenty of damn good shooters in Aztec's maintenance department. Um, plus, they now have a really an, a former police officer who is the head of their security force, John. He's a good guy. Uh, he's one of the people I will miss from K-12. That's all I have for you tonight. Um, let's be positive about the 2A. Let's not be as pessimistic. I have one friend that he's Debbie Downer of everything, and he shouldn't be. He's a very bright guy, and he's a very talented guy. And he's a hell of a good guy to, to talk to and 
uh, have a beer with. Um, he needs to just get a little more positive because the country isn't dead yet, and there's enough of us that'll give blood and treasure to make sure we're not going to let the country die all the way. It needs some help. It definitely needs some TLC. But we got it. Like, share, subscribe, rumble, be great.